Hark the bardic paladin who sings and plays again. He tells the tales of glory and weaves a magic story. He'll join you at your table and ask you to share a fable. Heroes of humble origin, villains who must be fought again. No matter their skill or prowess, the people in life are countless. So we pray you heed our request. Enjoy this tale of sidekicks and sidequests. Sidequests and sidequests and sidequests. Episode 8, Taco the Rakshasa Valet. Welcome to Sidekicks and SideQuests, the Dungeons and Dragons podcast that helps to put humans back in humanity and breathe life into your campaign NPCs with backstory and bravado. That's right, we're building a world, one character at a time. I'm your host, Kurt Krenwogi, the Bardic Paladin, and I'll be joining Charles Basili at his table in the Levitating Platter. <laughs> We're here tonight, as always, in the levitating platter, and tonight I've decided to pull my chair up and sit at the table here of my good friend, Charles. Why don't you say hello and introduce yourself, Mr. Charles? Hello, I'm Charles. Yes, and what is it that you do? I make computers not break. That's awesome. It's good to have those around, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're handy little things, yeah, occasionally. Awesome. Well, uh, I guess as we're slowly moving into this, uh, do you currently or have you ever played Dungeons and Dragons, good sir? Oh yes, for many, many years, since high school. Mostly as a DM, occasionally as a player, but pretty much always. So the oldest system that you've run, has it been 3.5 or have you gone even older than that? Oh no, yeah, I've, I've run the first edition AD&D and I got a chance to play briefly in a game, but I mean, I was in high school at that point and... Players, DM, disappeared, you know. Oh, well, that's exciting. That's cool you've had such a uh, progression through the different editions. And I'm sure you've uh, you know, had an opportunity to play multitudes of other uh, RPG games and stuff, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of the White Wolf games, um, Shadowrun, and we looked at GURPS and decided the spreadsheets, the game was not the game for us. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, went back to something a little simpler. There, we've also played a couple of like more esoteric ones, like uh, Polaris and um, Microscope. Oh, cool! The, awesome. So, Polaris, um, you play this elf swordsman star knight thing or whatever, and your goal is to die before you become corrupted. So it's pretty pretty tragic. Um, hmm. And then uh, in Microscope, you you're telling the story of the setting and you zoom in and out and it's, it's a pretty fun game, but it, I've heard of microscope. Yeah. They're, it, it's not a dice game. Mm. If you're like a role player, as opposed to a role player, then it's not really that great of a game. I see. Well, as we uh, get into the namesake of our show, we like to ask our guests what their favorite sidekicks, AKA their favorite NPCs are, uh, as well as their favorite side quests. So I'll ask first, do you have a favorite NPC that you've either come across in a D and D adventure or a video game or TV or film or whatever? And, uh, and why are they your favorite? Um, so my favorite would have to be uh, dilly dally. He was a pet rock, um, Cool. They acted as the familiar and focus of an insane wizard. Wow. That sounds incredible. So Dilly Dally, the pet rock familiar, who was also the arcane focus for a wizard. Was this a character of one of your players or? Yes. Yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty, pretty hilarious. And um, he also would talk to Dilly Dally often in the middle of combat and, you know, just have long drawn out ar arguments with Dilly Dally and just, wouldn't cast spells because he was talking to the rock. Oh, that's awesome. That sounds that sounds amazing. And then is there a favorite side quest, uh, side adventure that you've come across in D&D, &D, video games, movies, etc.? And why um, is it your favorite? Rescuing Dilly Dally. Oh, so you had a whole adventure <laughs> where you had to rescue Dilly Dally. Yeah. Uh, so Pet Rock, not very mobile, mm -hmm. um, got left behind after the wizard got knocked unconscious. And um, the wizard needed to go back and get dilly dally and 
the reason we had to run was still there. So we had to <laughs> wow. figure out how to overcome um, quite an up-leveled encounter to rescue Dilly Dally. And was it a solo adventure for the wizard or did the whole party go with him? Uh, the whole party helped, yeah. I mean, because the wizard was quite upset that we had not grabbed the pet rock. So, Wow, okay. And then, uh, I guess to wrap up this uh, interview section for you here, uh, what is it that you're passionate about and why are you passionate about it? Storytelling. A lot of times, people have lost the art of storytelling. They've lost the sense of like place that comes from having these like stories, like the, the history and all that. And... Um, it's a lot of fun when I hear people talking about events that occurred in, you know, D and D or whatever years later. And they, you know, there, there's an odd, like um, nostalgia for, you know, the, uh, the time we blew up the pirate ship with, you know, mayonnaise or whatever. And <laughs> it, uh, it's just a very um, neat thing to have these sort of like tales of battles that never really happened. So you have the, you have the benefit of being, you know, like an old veteran without the, um, often traumatic experiences of it, mm -hmm. the camaraderie of being an old veteran, perhaps. But. Awesome. All right. So as we finished up the uh, interview portion of the episode, let's go ahead and jump into NPC creation. And uh, so this is the part of the show where we uh, either, you know, in advance have given these questions ahead of time so you can come to the table with one. But I think like uh, the other recent guests I've had, I think you've elected to go with the generate a random NPC by rolling the bones method, I believe. Correct? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So the first thing we need to figure out is a name for a character. So... Uh, Mr. Charles, if you could please roll a d20 and let me know what you get. Eight. Eight? Okay. Oh, actually, this name was uh, thought up by Michael. And the name of your character is going to be Taco. So we're working with Taco. So congratulations. We've already got one of our uh, swapped out names already in use. Taco. Okay. Taco. Okay. And so the next thing we need to figure out is what is the ancestry of this taco, this elusive taco? Let's go ahead and roll a 2d10 uh, for a 100 percentile. Uh, that's 27 on the percentile. 27, a Rakshasa. We have a Rakshasas are the demons. They're the tigers with the backwards hands. So we have a <laughs> we have a Rakshasa named Taco. This is working out fabulously. All right, let's figure out what is the job or the role of this particular Rakshasa. Why don't you go ahead and roll a D8 and let me know what you get. Uh, that was an eight. An eight? A valet. So this Rakshasa named Taco is apparently someone's personal valet. So interesting. And then uh, let's go ahead and determine the age of this Rakshasa. Why don't you go ahead and roll a regular uh, D10? That's a three. Three? A child. We have a child Rakshasa named Taco, who is a valet. I guess the, the backwards hands help opening doors or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> and now let's go ahead. So this part, before we... Uh, we get to take a little bit of a pause from rolling dice. Based on what we've already learned, let's figure out what does uh, what does our Rakshasa Taco look like, and then can we describe Taco with three adjectives? So what are you what are you thinking? He's obviously got a fez and a little vest. Okay, a fez and a vest. Okay, I like it. He's I mean he's short because he's a kid, right? Right. Probably working his way up the demon ranks, right? Yeah, yeah. He's probably. He's probably a valet for either like some like local warlord type figure or, you know, the more powerful demon. Okay. And then um, three adjectives. Yeah. Plucky. That seems like that's a good adjective for Taco. Okay. For Rakshasa valet. I, I'm kind of getting like a, um, oh, what, what was the, what was the kid's name in Indiana Jones? Uh, short round. Short round. Yeah. I'm kind of getting a short round vibe. So, um. <laughs> Okie like, dokie, Dr. Jones. Yeah. Yeah. And, um. He's got, you know, his greater demon pals as I do. Okie dokie, Dr. Gawakador. <laughs> <laughs> so, plucky for sure. Okay. Ambitious? Yeah, probably ambitious. And we'll, we'll go with... Um, Bit of a brown noser? No? He's shaking his head. 
No, that's not that's not quite. We'll go with scrappy. Scrappy. So no, we've so we've got plucky, scrappy, and ambitious. Okay. And now we get to go back to rolling dice, which I'm sure you've been wanting to do. We now have to figure out what is a valuable uh, item that this particular valet has. So first we need to determine whether that's an item, a piece of lore, a secret, or an ideal or a concept. Uh, so why don't you go ahead and roll a D4 and let me know what you get. Yep. Three. Three. That would be a secret. So let's go ahead and now roll a D6 so we can figure out what is the secret. Uh, three again. Three. Okay, apparently this Rakshasa is very afraid of spiders. Very dramatic, so I'm sure someone could try and pull a fast one on him by like, oh, spiders. <laughs> um, okay, and now we need to figure out the last thing is the side quest. Obviously, some adventuring party is going to come across this particular valet. Very strange looking, but this valet has a particular job that they need the heroes to do. So I need you to roll so we can figure out what is the side quest that they're going to send them on. Uh, that's a two. Two? Escort them to the bank. That seems perfectly reasonable for a valet, probably handling the uh, personal finances of his demon lord. So, all right. Seems like we've uh, come up with a pretty interesting character, um, but we need to drill down and figure out what are the rewards that are involved for escorting Taco the valet to the hell bank with the, the money? Yeah. Now, I mean, of course... I, I'm I'm kind of interested in the name of the bank because I mean I've banked with a few institutions that could probably <laughs> qualify, but we'll we'll leave that aside for now. But uh, yeah, um, no. So let's see. So are, are we rolling for that, or are we just coming up with it? No, come up with it. We got to okay. figure. Now okay. we've got all the information so, we need, so we need to figure out what's the reward for the players in succeeding on this particular side quest of the escort mission up to the bank. It's got to be something just like ridiculous, or you know, just like kind of cements like it's either got to be something really funny or just really like whoa like you know severed hand or something like that um you think the rakshasa would reward them with a severed hand <laughs> like a monkey's paw yeah something like that grant's wishes whatever oh you think oh a cursed monkey paw that would actually yeah. be that, because that's... he's trying to work his way up the demon ring so he needs to corrupt some people in order to get ahead right yep corrupt the wish always a classic Okay, so okay, he'll he'll award the players with a cursed item, which in this case is going to be a monkey's paw. Yep, classic. Okay, well, what is going to be the consequence of failure or the refusal of the call? Oh, that's a good one. Like obviously, he must be escorting a, a chunk of change for his boss, and if the players fail or don't help him, then that probably means is there going to be like a power play or something in hell? We're looking on to a bunch of a. Uh, Tabaxi who seem to have gotten into a bar fight. So uh, Randolph and Mr. Underhill are currently breaking up the fight right now. So. Yeah, I've got five gold on Randall. Ah, there we go. No, but uh, yeah, so um, consequence of like refusal, consequence of failure, those seem to almost be different, right? Okay. So like a consequence of refusal, he robs the players. <laughs> oh, okay. He's going to just rob straight up, yep. rob the players for yeah. ignoring him. Or like pickpocket them, something something like that, yeah. And then okay. uh, failure, we have a plucky, ambitious little guy here that um, is going to finger them for having uh, been on the take, and they're going to have to deal with his uh, boss, whomever it is. Oh, so if he gets robbed on the way to the bank, then he's going to call, he's going to name the players and say, they were in on the, on the yep. job to rob me. Yep. Ooh, that's good. That's drama. That's spicy. I like it. Okay, so I think we've got a pretty fleshed out NPC here. So now we're going to go into the random encounter. So now this is the part where I will take on the role. Um, so I think in this case, I'm going to play your boss. I'm going to play this big demon lord. And I'm going to be, this is going to be me giving you uh, the mission, I suppose, to, to escort uh, the, you know, to take the gold over to the bank and then we'll, we'll leave it from there. So if yep. you're ready, I'm ready. Um, what, what's, what's my boss's name? Uh, for this case, we'll say Lord Grubbub. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. He's probably a big portly sort of guy. Okay. Where is that dang little 
Valet, but Taco! Taco, where are you? Yeah, boss, I'm right here. Ah, there you are. Hmm, Taco, I've done well this week in torturing swords and collecting valuables from fiendish entities who would dare to rob my place, as well as some other pesky adventurers who tried to meddle in my business. But now I have a fat sack of cash, and I need you, Taco, to take it to Hell's Bank. Yeah, you got a fat something. I mean, yes, of course, Lord Grubbub. <laughs> yes, I want you to do this expediently, for I have fingernails to rip out of the hands of those who thought they could take my spoil. Oh, yes, of course, your most corpulent one. Yes, yes, very good. Here you go, Taco. All right. And scene. <laughs> okay. So I think we have a pretty good idea. I mean, yeah. Maybe it was more me hamming it up as a Lord Grubbub, but... Who seems like an interesting NPC that you might flesh out at some future date. That's true. I'll have to write a note somewhere and figure out more about Lord Grubbub. But yeah, it seems like Taco is like, you know, he's very uh, groveling and he's very uh, uh, deferential. But I could see, you know, I, I saw, I heard the uh, the jibes that he was putting in there. So I could I could hear the uh, the snark. I could hear <laughs> the, uh, I could hear his ambition and wanting to rise up through the ranks. So yeah, it didn't quite work in as much pluck as I would have liked, but yeah. Well, he was eager to go deliver the the money, so. Oh yeah, yeah, and I mean the 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 players will definitely uh, get a chance to see him at his pluckiest, I think. All right, so definitely a interesting NPC to be able to stick into your next adventure whenever the heroes descend to the nine hells. So. <laughs> All right, so now let's go to final thoughts. So, but what did you think of this particular experience of being interviewed and asked to help make up an NPC character? Yeah, this was a lot of fun, and it's interesting being in this uh, levitating, levitating platter place. Yeah, um, kind of a long trip. Don't know if, don't know if um, I'll I'll find my way back to this particular prime material plane. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, if you're if you're ever in uh, the uh, the astral plane, maybe maybe we can meet up again and have a have a beer there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'd love to. You know, I'm sure you've got more crazy characters you can think up of in your head, and I can put into the next big hit. Well, yes, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, sir. All right. So do you have anything that you, uh, you'd you like to plug or anything like that? Any big projects that you want people to know about out there on the interwebs? Um, no, just I would admonish all of your listeners to play more D&D. All right. Fair enough. Well, with that, we thank you for listening and uh, we hope you have a good one. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Sidekicks and SideQuests. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast through Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Overcast. Or feel free to save the RSS feed to use the app of your choice. Visit our website, www.sidekicksandsidequests.com, for links, write-ups of the NPCs, and to learn more about the podcast. To stay up to date and share your fan creations, you can like and follow the podcast on social media by searching for at side kq podcast on facebook and twitter the podcast is also on reddit so join our subreddit community at r slash side kq podcast to share your art stories discussions and commentary if you'd like to hail the bard send an email to sidekicks and side quests all one word at gmail.com i ask that you please leave an honest review on itunes to help spread the word about the show Sidekicks and Sidequests is unofficial fan content permitted under the fan content policy, meaning I'm not approved or endorsed by Wizards. Portions of the materials used are property of Wizards of the Coast, copyright Wizards of the Coast, LLC. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you at the pub next time. Bar to rock on one, two, one, two, three, four!